Hi, my name is Ryan Kennard. I work with the Upper Assiniboine River Conservation District, a locally run soil and water conservation district based in Minneota, Manitoba. I'm here today to discuss the design criteria that went into the demonstration site, uh, selection of trees, spacing in the field, and, and uh, the most important part is the, the dynamic around the, the future land use management. We can't have the shelter belts impact the the future uh, ability to, to make management decisions on the ground. So I will go through those three parts in brief detail with you today. I will start with showing you the, the rows of trees that we chosen for the demonstration site. There are two main types of rows, the outer row and the infield rows. I'm going to talk about the tree species selection and the attributes of the different species we've chosen and a bit about the in-row spacing. So the outer row is on the most westerly edge of this field. It runs east to west, sorry, it runs north to south, and it is designed to both catch wind and snow with the dense shrub layer and also lift the wind up away from the field surface with the tall tree form species. We looked at height of tree, mature tree. We looked at the density. You try to achieve a maximum density of about 80% uh, to, to achieve the, the largest um, impact on um, reduction of wind speeds. We looked at growth form both above and below ground. And we looked at the root systems and the, the water competition aspect of the species selection. So again, starting with the outer row, we chose a lilac species due to its height, overall height, its density, and its uh, non-suckering habit. So therefore, you won't start to see new sprouts starting to creep out into the, the fields. And then we chose a hybrid poplar species for its fast growing and, and height um, attributes. That comprises the outer row of the field demonstration site. The infield rows, of which there are five or six, at staggered, at staggered intervals across the field are strictly to achieve that wind reduction, the speed of wind reduction. Again, chosen for its growth habit, tall, uh, narrow growing habit, a fast growing tree, and as well a, a small and shallow root system that won't compete as high as other species for water with the adjacent crops. Some of the in-row spacings I'll talk about are we chose a six foot to space between the two rows to achieve a, an ease of maintenance and, and mowing to remove the competition from the grass. And within the row, the trees are spaced approximately eight feet apart to again achieve a maximum density um, when factoring in the lower growing lateral branches. Uh, an eight foot um, spacing between the poplar trees will, will help us to achieve that, that dense a uh, wall there that will help lift the wind speeds away. I will now go on to talk about some of the, the field spacing stuff that we, um, we, we considered in the design uh, of this demonstration site. So I now want to go over with you some of the decisions that were made around the field, uh, the field spacing for these shelter belts. We, the, the biggest concern we had here was that we did not want to, in the long term, limit our management options. So we've chosen uh, headland spacings that would accommodate a growing size of, of equipment for the landowner. And eventually the, th the thought here on this outside leading edge is that this 80 foot headland would probably be um, turned into a perennial cover and either hayed or left to be stand grazed. Uh, on the north end of the field and the south end of the field, uh, the headland was chosen to be a little larger to accommodate field spraying equipment. And, and the biggest and hardest decision that was made was this, this internal field spacing. I don't have a third row here, but um, these, these rows, as you will see in a minute, go all the way across a quarter section. So this was a critical piece to get this separate distance here as, um, as a custom or a, um, it would work with as many different kinds of seeding equipment that, that could be on the farm in the future. So we'll now go over to the other photo and I'll, I'll show you the actual image of the, of the design of the, of the project site and I can explain to you a little more in detail there. So now we're looking at the design map for the demonstration site. These rows again run north to south 
on the northwest corridor of 13, 12, 23 in the Kenton area in the arm of Woodworth. So again on the left hand side you see the the um, the 80 foot headland and the yellow strip which which indicates the snow catch layer or sh shelter belt, that one comprising of lilac and a row of poplar. And then all subsequent rows or infield rows or double rows of poplar. What we've effectively created here is multiple 10 acre cells which can be both cropped for cash crop or winter feed can be grown and, and then uh, with a minimal level of processing can be supplied uh, for cattle to come to the feed and then deposit the manure on the field reducing both the processing and handling of the feed cost as well as the, the handling of any manure distribution. Um, again we agonized over the spacing of the infield rows because we wanted to make sure we weren't going to limit ourselves to any kind of management activities in the future. But I think what we've been able to do here is have a very good compromise of both a very small footprint when it comes to um, displacing cropland but achieving a maximum benefit of, of the wind protection both from uh, the wind stress on the growing crops and from the wind stress of uh, winter feeding sites. What we've done here is really created uh, several uh, wind fences to feed livestock behind throughout the winter and provide that, that thermal benefit, the thermal barrier benefit. You can notice in the bottom part of the photograph the, the existing feed yard. So the hope is that that feed yard will be used you know, strictly for the calving process or any, of, any times of needed confinement. But uh, having these shelter belts on this site really open up the opportunities to, to extensive winter feeding and, and low cost um, uh, production strategies for winter feeding. So that wraps it up. I hope that gives you a good idea of how, again, I'll give you one caution that, I mean, every site, individual site, is going to have to be, um, you know, viewed through its own specific lens and, and your site-specific criteria will determine both the species composition, the species attributes, uh, uh, the spacing in the field, and, and the future kind of management plans for the site. If you'd like any more information or advice on, on this concept, please feel free to call the Upper Assiniboine River Conservation District at 567-3554.